Good morning. Uh, thanks to Deb Adams for the invite. I love speaking here at THI. It's always nice to spend uh, the weekend here in Houston. So uh, no financial disclosures. Uh, so today we're going to talk about the global needs of uh, congenital heart disease surgery um, and perfusion, as well as conflict and barriers to the education that is required to get these professionals uh, where they need to be to be able to operate on these children. And then finally, the educational endeavors of Nova Cardiac Alliance um, and how we operate in conflict zones. And uh, so without further ado, um, this is a slide from one of the articles and presentations my colleague and friend, Dr. Marcelo Cartarelli, authored in 2013 in the Journal of Cardiothoracic Surgery. Um, this article, I love to put in my presentation when speaking about uh, pediatric cardiac surgery globally, because it kind of shows you quickly, abstractly, the deficit of cardiac surgeons in continents around the world. Um, as you can see, Asia, you know, almost 2,000 short surgeons. Um, and this is based upon the U.S. Uh, ideal ratio of congenital heart surgery that takes place in the United States. Uh, 140 kids per surgeon is available in the United States. So that was kind of set as the ideal ratio. So as you can see in these other continents is the deficits of countries that fall below that ideal ratio of uh, congenital heart disease surgical patients and active pediatric cardiac surgeons. So as we can kind of hypothesize, uh, a lack of cardiac surgeons in these continents probably also leads to a lack of other cardiac specialists, such as pediatric perfusionists, pediatric cardiac anesthesiologists, nursing, and support staff. Um, so you can really see the kind of um, need for global education to help uh, reduce the amount of patients that need surgery and don't have access to uh, surgeons in, in this. Um, so we can break this down even further um, into kind of a map view or country view um, of that previous slide. And you can see there's a lot of yellow and red in Asia and Africa, the two, two continents that had the highest deficit, right? Um, and the yellow and red both are showing the red being no surgeon in country and yellow being, you know, not enough surgeons in country to take care of the children that are presenting with uh, congenital heart disease. Um, so with the red and the yellow countries, it's not saying that cardiac surgery, pediatric cardiac surgery is not happening in these countries. This most certainly is. However, the population demands and the actual cases that are presenting aren't being taken care of by the amount of surgeons and specialists in country. Also, there's very different geographical locations that a lot of surgery takes place in certain city centers, but then as you move into the rural areas and outside is where we find these, uh, you know, kind of deserts of no surgery taking place. Um, and that's kind of where our charity as well as other charities are kind of going in and trying to help foster, build capacity in these countries and these areas that have a population, have a need and have people that want to learn, um, just don't have the access to that education. Um, so we're kind of going into these countries and trying to build that capacity. Um, and we'll kind of go through some of the reasons and the barriers of why these countries um, are lacking pediatric cardiac surgical care. Um, I began uh, traveling with Cardiac Alliance, which was ICHF back in 2008. Um, and it's incredible the amount of information that's been transcribed from the US, Australia, Europe into these countries. Um, lots of, all, all textbooks have been pirated and PDF'd and photocopied and translated into languages all over the world, which, you know, uh, piracy is one thing, but however, open source journals and, and magazines uh, really have allowed us to give this knowledge to so many different people. Um, and, you know, as I travel to these far flung places, I notice that I'm not only bringing knowledge to them, but usually they already know this. And I'm just concreting that they've learned what they're, you know, and, and they're doing it correctly. Um, so it's really nice to see that they're studying and then learning these things, just not putting into practice and not having that person that has been educated formally to say, yes, you're doing this correctly and they feel much better. Um, so, um, but there are barriers. Uh, and one of those barriers to this education and, and proliferation of cardiac surgery uh, in children is conflict. Um, unfortunately, we live in a world where conflict is occurring almost everywhere. Um, it's a major obstacle. It makes scarce resources even scarcer. 
uh, it's difficult for us to cross borders, to ship in supplies, to uh, move equipment. Uh, even volunteers don't want to travel to some spots because it's dangerous. Um, but, you know, congenital heart disease carries on. Children are born every day and needs to have surgery. So we need to kind of figure out how to push aside these barriers and, and bring them this um, help. Uh, so this is a slide. I have another one that I, I used back in 2019. And I'll show you as well. Um, these are the top top 10 conflicts to watch in the world. Um, and as you can see, Ukraine's one, Ethiopia's two. They're highlighted in red because these are kind of the two places that Cardiac Alliance is focusing on um, in, uh, this year. Um, and I'll get into more about uh, what we're doing in Ukraine and then the future aspirations in Ethiopia. Um, so in 2019, you can see Ukraine was still on the list, but obviously rocketed to the first position uh, due to the Russian invasion. Um, Africa, as you can see in the previous slide, is number 10 because there's so many problems in Africa that they had to combine it into one conflict to make room for other conflicts because that's how many conflicts we have going on in the world, which is uh, unfathomable. Um, so also all these countries that have conflicts are also represented on the map as yellow and red. Uh, that have no surgeon or limited surgical capability. Um, so clearly we're having issues training and maintaining staff and cardiac surgery in these countries due to you know, conflicts and, and issues that are ongoing. And, and as you would guess, all the accredited schools or I'd say most of the accredited schools that exist in, the, in this world are all in the green countries. And if you remember the green countries, we're all United States, Australia, Europe, um, Canada, Though these are the countries that have you know little conflict, or at least have a safe you know living environment and not being uh, you know invaded and war torn. Um, so, so these are credit profusion schools in these countries that don't have conflicts. Also, you know basically have boards that have government rules and regulations and are able to you know pass on these certifications to people and confirm their knowledge and training base from schools and graduates from places like THI um, to confer the degree and practice in the, in, in the country. Uh, most of these boards do have some um, ability, you know, Canadians can practice here, we can practice in Canada. That gets a little stickier in different countries where, uh, you know, you might have to retest and stuff. But overall, these are kind of the boards that are currently available in these countries that, um, are able to, to, to have these degrees. Um, so what, what sense, what are we doing with profusion education? So, you know, we're basically an on the job model. We go into these countries, we train profusionists side by side. Um, we develop kind of a curriculum for each country based upon what they're doing and what level they are. So, you know, when we first start these trips, sometimes it's very simple cases. Uh, we progress as we go along. Um, Deb can attest to this. She's been in Iraq from the very beginning when we started working in Nasiriyah. Um, and they progressed all the way through to having um, almost a self-sustaining um, cardiac team. Uh, this right here is Naeem. He, this is Benghazi, Libya, where we also have set up programs. Um, again, in a conflict zone, Libya, you know, obviously Benghazi, was a hot zone for a while and still remains to be um, tamed. Uh, but they have a huge hospital. They, 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 you know, they do like 15,000 live births at Big Eyes Medical Center. There's tons of heart, heart surgery that needs to happen. Um, so training these perfusionists with NCA has become you know, a passion of mine and many others in this room that have traveled with us or other charitable, group, charitable groups uh, to kind of move this along. Uh, so Obviously, the other country that we've been very heavily invested in is Ukraine. Uh, the Cardiac Alliance, we started visiting Ukraine in 1994, and we've been to three major programs, which are Kharkiv, Odessa, and Kyiv. Um, Kharkiv is where I've been the most. Uh, Odessa was actually my first trip to Ukraine in uh, 2010, and I've returned many times, and Ukraine definitely holds a special place in my heart. Um, Kharkov is the first program that I was involved with that became completely self-sufficient. So I trained perfusionists, the surgeon, anesthesia, nursing staff, they've all been trained by us and went through all the steps. And now they're so um, exemplary that they even travel with us now. So now their perfusionist travels with us to on our trips to other countries to kind of pass along the knowledge, which is fantastic. Um, unfortunately now Kharkov is on the Eastern side of Ukraine 
and is being threatened with the war machine from Russia. So a lot of the people have been displaced from Eastern Ukraine into the West. Um, so this is, you know, pre-invasion where we were in, in the country. And then basically almost, so the war started in February 24th. We were in country just before that in, um, I think, December. Um, we were in Lviv and we just started the program in Lviv. Beautiful Western town right on the border of Poland. Uh, we went there for a two week trip, started the, the program. We identified the surgeon, young guy. Um, his wife is a cardiologist. Um, they have perfusionists, everything was in place. We did the trip, everything was great. And then the war broke out. Uh, unfortunately, the, everyone who fled Kharkov and Kyiv, everyone was flowing into Lviv. Okay, all the refugees were pushing into Lviv and then trying to get across the border to Poland. Uh, we got notification from the surgeon that there was many children that were arriving that had newborns that had critical heart disease um, and needed operations. Uh, so we kind of went into hyperspeed and we put together a team real quick and we ended up flying into Lviv or flying into Krakow, Poland in um, middle of March and did a trip there, uh, a one week trip across the border. Uh, took a 10 hour bus ride. It was pretty difficult to see all the refugees on the border uh, to get into Lviv and do some operations. Um, it was interesting to be in Lviv at the time. There was teams that were arriving from all different hospitals coming to Lviv to kind of set up other hospitals and just basically help that staff uh, because they had no place to operate in Kyiv and they were, all the teams basically moved to Lviv to kind of help out. So we were sharing OR space with all these different people um, and operating at the same time. And it was great to see. Um, so we're also in Africa uh, uh, and the red is Ethiopia up there and uh, just finished our first trip to the De Democratic Republic of Congo in Kinshasa, um, which is an awesome site. And they're super excited, it's a great hospital. Um, and then we are going to Angola in a few weeks in July. So uh, that's gonna be kind of a new site for us. So Africa uh, is definitely on our map and we're trying to build capacity there. Um, we are looking for a perfusionist. This is a quick plug. Perfusionist for the first week, or not the first week, but one week in July, July 9th to the 16th, we need a PD perfusionist to go to Addis Ababa uh, in Ethiopia. So if you know anyone or anything, let's go. Um, <laughs> The and then you know talking about Iraq and NCA, uh, we have a long history there. Um, I'd be remiss to not talk about Bob Groom, who is also in Africa and he's building capacity in Kenya uh, at his hospital. They has a perfusion school now that he is teaching and graduating perfusionists, and that's an awesome, awesome thing. And uh, it's funny I've seen Bob in weird places all over the world. I was actually pumping in uh, Tehran. Uh, Iran, and he kind of showed up in the OR one day and was like, hey, and I could not believe that Bob Groom was in the OR in Tehran while I was operating, and he's like, they're giving some spe speech at a conference, you know, so it was bizarre, and I've seen, I can't remember where else I saw that, I saw him somewhere, it was like an airport, I don't know if it was in India, I, don't know, I forget where it was, but I ran into him, and it was, it was bizarre, so, um, yeah, so that's pretty much it I have, you know, um, Happy to be here. Um, Dr. Novik is traveling to Lviv right now. So I don't think he's gonna be able to present. I don't know if he got in touch with anybody, but I know he was in transit to Lviv. So that's a difficult kind of flight and uh, to get over there. But I know Marcelo, our other uh, senior surgeon and a research um, coordinator for the uh, Cardiac Alliance is gonna talk next, I believe. And uh, we look forward to having you guys on trips or getting involved anyway, and we appreciate it and thank you. Thank you.